an entitled Karen tries to steal my backpack off the bus, all because I refused to hand it over simply because she wanted it for her son. And when she's confronted about what she's doing, she lies to everyone around them, claiming that I actually stole from her and that this bag was hers all along. And I've honestly never been more baffled by someone else's entitlement in my entire life. Here's what happened. Okay, so this happened just this weekend and I'm still baffled by what went down. First, a little bit of backstory. I'm a 26-year-old female and I was riding the bus over to see my fiance. We have recently bought our first place together and I'm gradually bringing over my stuff, such as clothes and toiletries, stuff along those lines. And I'm using my backpack to transport that stuff over to his place. And I have to do it this way because I don't have a car yet of my own. The backpack I was using has a design on the front of it that looks like a dragon coiled around a skull. And I really like the design and I think it's pretty cool. So I'm at the back of the bus halfway through my trip when the entitled mother and her younger son get on the bus. Now the kid looked no older than six or seven years old and as all kids do wanted to sit at the back of the bus. So he sits at the opposite end of the row of the back seats for me while his entitled mother sat opposite of him in one of the seats facing backwards. And as we're sitting there the kid looks at my backpack and says wow mom look she's got a dragon on her bag. Can I have a bag like that for school? It's really cool. I look over and I catch the entitled mother's eye and I just gave her a nod and a polite smile. The mother then chimes in and says excuse me where did you get that bag? My son would like one so could you let me know where you got it? So I said oh sure. I got this backpack from Amazon but I'm sure if you look online you can try and find something similar. The entitled mother then looks at me and says well how much did it cost? So I said well I got it a while ago so the prices may have gone up since then but I think it cost me about $20 online. Now when I said this you would have thought that I had just kicked this lady's dog because she says $20 that's quite expensive and I just responded by saying I'm sorry I can't really help that but the quality is really good considering the price and that was honestly the end of the conversation especially since the entitled mother got on her phone presumably to look up one of those bags and after a few minutes she spoke to me again now with a slight change in her tone excuse me I looked up at her and I said yes I looked up one of those bags you told me about and the cheapest one I found was nearly $40 that is ridiculous so I responded by saying well I'm sorry but I did warn you that it has been a while since I bought mine and it looks like the prices have obviously gone up since then this entitled mother just looks at me up and down with a scowl almost like she's assessing me well how about this why don't you give my son your bag and you can just go buy yourself another one seeing as you have no problem paying for that one and when she said this I was seriously taken back especially by what she said next as it absolutely blew my mind and I could not believe her actions when she asked for my bag I looked at her and I said uh no I'm not gonna give you my bag it's mine and I'm not doing that at this point the kid kind of realized what was going on and he didn't like what was happening he said mom don't take this lady's bag it's okay I'll save up for one with my pocket money the entitled mother then says not now lovely the grown-ups are talking she then turns back to me and says just give me the bag you heard my son he wants it and I'm not spending so much money on one bag give me yours not quite believing what I'm hearing I said to her no again I'm not doing that I'm not giving you my bag it has all my stuff in it so the entitled mother lets out a huff and sits back in her seat she then turns to her kid and says sorry honey the mean lady's being selfish and she won't share her bag with you at that point I just roll my eyes and go back to looking out the window after a while the kid presses the button to stop the bus at the next stop now something that you need to know about when I'm on the bus I always keep one arm through one of the arm straps of my backpack in case it falls or someone tries to steal it you honestly never know so I'm looking out the window not giving this lady or her kid any attention simply not wanting to get into another confrontation and as I'm doing that I feel a hard yank on my arm I immediately know that someone tried to take my bag and guess what I look over and I see this entitled mother is going to grab my bag again I look at her and I say what on earth are you doing she says I'm taking that bag I gave you a chance to give it to my son and he wants it the kid chimes in and says mom stop I just want to go home I then start shouting and I say take your hands off of my property or I'm going to get the bus driver and call the police. Everyone on the bus was turned around and watching our little match of tug of war at this point and the bus driver had taken notice. He jumped out of his seat and was over at us in a flash. He came up and said ladies please stop what's going on? This entitled mother then looks at me and says she took my son's backpack and is refusing to return it. I want her kicked off of this bus and arrested. I respond by saying 
saying, uh, that's not true. This is literally my bag. But the entitled Karen doubles down. She seriously claims that I'm lying and that she bought this backpack for her son on Christmas, claiming that this is his favorite. I look at her and I say, no, I can prove it's my bag. The entitled mother rolls her eyes and folds her arm. I unzip the top of my backpack and pull out one of my bras. The entitled mother's face goes snow white when she realizes that she wasn't going to get away with this. Without a word, she spun on her heels and grabbed her son by the arm and rushed off the bus. I looked at the bus driver and I said, I'm really sorry about that. But the bus driver was not worried. He looked at me and said, no problem. We have cameras on this bus. I'll notify the company and have them take note that she's been trying to steal other passengers' possessions. The bus driver went back to his seat, started the bus back up again, and everyone finally started to relax. I kept my bag on my lap throughout the rest of the journey and never took my hands off of it until I was back home. That lady is seriously crazy. The fact that she would seriously try to take this person's bag after they told him several times, no, I'm not going to give you this bag, is kind of mind-blowing to me. I mean, seriously, how could someone result to thievery when they could very easily just buy it themselves? I mean, I'm surprised that the cops weren't involved. And plus, it was only, what, 40 bucks for the backpack? So is prison time and possibly losing your son worth stealing someone else's property? Absolutely insane situation. And hopefully, for the sake of karma and the original poster's peace of mind, this entitled mother gets in trouble for trying to steal someone else's property because what she tried to do is wrong and she seriously set such a bad example for her son. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. My husband canceled our Valentine's Day plans to go spend some time with his friend and I'm honestly upset and I seriously don't know what to do. So about a month ago, my husband made plans with his buddy. This friend of his lives in the next city over, little over an hour's drive away. He made plans for Monday, his day off. Then he got news that his schedule at work would change and he would get Tuesday off, which is Valentine's Day. So he called up his buddy to reschedule to hang out on Tuesday. Keep in mind, he goes over there like once a week. Later on, he asked what I want to do for Valentine's Day since he has the day off. I was happy he wanted to do something special. So I asked if we could get a banana split at our local fast food place. He agreed and I let him know I was excited. Well, then this morning, he tells me he he had forgotten that today was Valentine's Day, said he had scheduled to go to his friend's place for the day, and that he wouldn't be able to grab a banana split with me. I think it's also important to note, with our work schedules, we don't see each other very often. Now, obviously, this hurt me. He prioritized his friend over me again. This isn't the first time that's happened, and I didn't really try to hide my disappointment, but I half expected him to bail on our plans, since he does like half the time anyways. About an hour or so later, he called back into the room and said that he felt guilty and kind of bad and was considering canceling his plans with his friend. I told him the damage was already done and honestly, I didn't really want to go out anymore anyways. He then got really upset at that and kept asking me what he could do to make it up to me. In my mind, he already showed where his priorities are and I'm only option number two for him, so I couldn't really think of a way of him making up anything to me. We're on an extremely tight budget for at least another month, so there's basically no extra money to do anything. Is there more I should have done? He still ended up canceling his plans with his buddy because he's going out of town tomorrow for a few days and he has to get up early. I don't know what I could have said. He was feeling guilty, but I don't know how to fix without compromising my own feelings. He asked how to make it up to me and I asked him to prioritize a marriage course that we'll be doing for a few weeks coming up. What more could be done here? What should I do? I think from your perspective, you have every right to be upset. I mean, it's Valentine's Day and there's some kind of expectation clearly in your relationship that you want to have something special done on that day. So for him to say, oh yeah, let's do something and then last second change his mind not once, but twice, just to then come back to you and be like, okay, my plans fell through, time to go back to my wife is overall incredibly frustrating and very rude. And I think you have it right. He really does consider you in some ways as a second option. And that's not fair for you in the slightest. You just wanted to have a banana split at a fast food restaurant. You just wanted to spend some time with your spouse and have some semblance of a good Valentine's Day. But instead he actively said, you know what? Without thinking about my wife first, I'm going to spend Valentine's Day with my friend. And while sure, I'm personally of the opinion that Valentine's Day is ridiculous, but typically speaking, especially in the relationship you have, there should be an expectation that yes, you're going to spend time with your spouse. So I think just articulating how you feel will hopefully get the message across that you clearly feel like you're playing second fiddle in this marriage and that you feel like his friends are more important than you. And that's not fair 
in the slightest. And that's also not to say that he can't have friends in the first place, but it definitely sounds like it is not balanced in the slightest, and some changes clearly need to be made. My parents are incredibly rich, and treated me like an absolute burden throughout the entirety of my childhood, using their generational wealth so willingly, while still refusing me even the basic necessities of life. And it's all so frustrating and so unbelievably toxic, and I seriously don't know what to do. So I first want to say that I know I need to get over this, but it is really tough. So in the 50s and 60s, my parents benefited from expensive private schooling and extremely wealthy parents, as well as all the other boomer stuff that all the middle class boomers got, like cheap housing and a really good job. My dad literally got given a partnership at a major law firm by my grandfather. They had me in the 80s. They preferred my brother from the start, which doesn't help things. They foisted me off on my grandma pretty much full time. But when I was 10 years old and they were 40, the age I am now, my mother inherited a lot of money and they bought a huge 30 room mansion in the center of our town outright with no mortgage in sight. I went to the local state schools. I was bullied and ended up going to literally every school in town because my mother cut my hair herself, which was very short. I wore free glasses and secondhand clothing. I rarely got Christmas and birthday presents and never had any birthday parties. The other kids were really confused because, well, we lived in a mansion and my mom wasn't buying me sanitary products. She even made me work in my dad's office under minimum wage at 12 years old just to pay for them and then in various local shops around town. Meanwhile, my parents were living it up with two huge parties a year with 200 plus people at a time, crates of wine, barrels of beer on tap, stuff like that. My mother bought curtains that cost $6,000. It's that kind of needless spending that really drove me nuts. They inherited more huge lump sums over the years as various relatives passed away. My mother even owns a diamond tiara and has given away numerous fur coats. I went to university and my loan was means assessed, but my parents didn't give the level of handouts that the government expected. So unlike poorer classmates, I had to work through my degree. My parents helped me with rent for a while and did give me part of a deposit for my first house, about $10,000. I was incredibly grateful at the time. Of course I was. They also paid $7,000 for my wedding. And again, I was hugely grateful. I'm not so grateful though 10 years later, and I really need help getting my stuff into perspective. I'm still really privileged, but I'm struggling to remember it. I have a daughter now, and all my money goes to her schooling, and the rest goes into savings for her. I personally look at my childhood and at my tiny home, and I think, wow, how great would it be to have no mortgage? How great would it be to afford a birthday party for my kid? How great would it be to take her abroad without saddling myself with huge crippling debt? And then I look at my parents, and they're going on cruises, downsizing their house to a mere four bedroom so they can enjoy the last dregs of generational wealth and listen to them telling me that all I have to do is eat out less and then maybe we wouldn't have to worry about the kitchen cupboard doors falling off. My cousins went to private schools such as Oxford and Cambridge University and subsequently worked in high paying careers. They have been bought houses outright by their parents as well as getting flats in London, horses, ski holidays, pretty much you name it and they got it. And of course I get them asking why I can't be more like my cousins. Meanwhile, for Christmas, my parents bought me a pair of slippers off the internet. How can I let go of this awful sadness and this terrible sourness? I know I need to. I can't keep feeling like this. I know we can all agree that the boomers, yeah, I know, not all boomers, but most of them, have completely screwed over millennials. But I feel like I'm Tiny Tim, being given financial advice by the Scrooge. It isn't good for my mental health or my relationship with my parents. Never mind their relationship with my daughter, who's always asking why we can't live in a nice big house like grandma and grandpa and all of their friends. I don't know if I can bring myself to cut my parents off, but watching them being so caring to my own daughter is harder than it should be because I see that in fact they actually can be caring and loving people and it's just a shame that I never got it as a kid. What should I do? Your parents are incredibly toxic and I completely understand where you're coming from. They treated you like garbage when you were a kid and they definitely did not spend any of their money to better your life. Like they spent a little bit of money for you to help out with like your house and your wedding. But at the end of the day, they clearly treated you like a burden growing up and they did not treat you like a child in the slightest. And that truly is unfair for you. You deserve so much better than that and your parents should have been better parents. And it's also ironic, I completely agree with you, that they literally treat your daughter with better respect and with more patience and care and love than they ever showed you growing up.
growing up. And that absolutely is offensive. And I think you already know this, but it's not about the money. It's not about what they have or don't have. It's about how they chose to treat you. And the way they treated you was just unfair. The money is merely a symptom of the problem. I think if anything, you can look at what they're doing and the way they're acting and simply be grateful that you are not like them. You clearly want to have a better life than that. And you're choosing to be a better parent than they ever could have been. And that really does mean a lot in my opinion. So hopefully you're able to work past those feelings and you're able to find some kind of boundaries between you and your parents because it sounds like they're incredibly entitled. And for the sake of your daughter, as well as your own mental health, I don't think anyone would blame you for taking a step away potentially and saying, you know what, I'm going to focus on me for a while because truly with all things considered, you really do deserve to live a peaceful life. My girlfriend of three years is suggesting that we should have an open relationship. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. So in January, my girlfriend of three years started a semester abroad. Prior to this, we lived together. We met each other through mutual friends. And less than a month after that, we were officially together. She was the person I imagined I would spend the rest of my life with. I had planned to propose when she returned from being abroad. A few days ago, she expressed interest in opening our relationship for a little bit. Not by much, but according to her, she wants to be able to flirt and kiss other people. The same would go for me, only I'm not interested in doing that. She said that she missed the excitement, the mysterious new, and that this was something that she had always felt like she needed, even in past relationships. That now, being on her own, she finally felt like herself again, while also saying how good it felt to finally admit this to herself, that there was nothing wrong with me, but rather that no long-term partner could provide her with what she needs. She told me that I was perfect for her, and that no one could ever measure up. Now, for a bit of context, this is not the first relationship for either of us, as we both have had other partners in the past. This revelation has shocked me more than I thought possible. I am not interested in opening up our relationship, and I want nothing but committed monogamy. I have no interest in other people, and the thought of her enjoying other people drives me insane. Honestly, the thought that she is so interested in others, in and of itself, is incredibly hurtful. And now, as a result, I'm starting to resent her for that. We talked a lot about it. She also sent me a TED Talk by Esther Perel, which did not help me in the slightest. She wants me to at least think about it. She tried to explain her reasoning to me, hoping that I would be compatible of seeing things from her perspective. She also hinted that being allowed to express herself this way might have a positive effect on their personal time, if you know what I mean. Now, this is all also at odds with my worldview. I always thought that most people want monogamous relationships, that this was how most people were happy, but apparently I'm wrong. I mean, is everyone else that interested in open relationships? Am I just one of the few that cannot handle it? Is there something wrong with me? Should I just forget about it because those kinds of relationships are a thing of the past? I have so many questions and I'm honestly not sure where to go with this. And it all kind of comes to a head. Can a relationship with such opposed needs work at all? Will it only get worse with time? And will she suddenly find herself wanting to spend some quality time with others once she's kissed them and flirted with them? And should I let her try it and see how I feel? What should I do? In my opinion, and this is no secret on this channel at this point, but I think open relationships are just cheating with extra steps. Like, there's literally no good excuse for that. If someone wants to flirt and kiss other people and get with other people while also in a relationship, that, in my opinion, makes you a very toxic person. And I personally find that incredibly unhealthy. So personally, it kind of sounds like she wants to cheat on you with permission. And if I was in your shoes, that absolutely would be a deal breaker. And that is a massive red flag. It's also interesting that this is all happening while she's abroad overseas in college. Like, it really does sound like there's some other guy there that she wants to hook up with, and she's basically looking for permission so she doesn't feel guilty about it. And in my eyes, if I was in your shoes, there's no way I would be okay with that. This is all assuming that something like that's going on. Obviously, we don't know with the information we have. But it's just unacceptable. Like, I really think a relationship should be a one-on-one, and mixing in other people in any way, shape, or form is going to break someone apart. And in this case, it would be the original poster. They clearly don't like this, and this crosses a boundary that they are not comfortable with. So I think standing your ground and saying, no, I'm not okay with this, as well as articulating and re-explaining why you feel this way and why you're so adamantly against having an open relationship would absolutely be something I would do if I was in your shoes. Because what starts as kissing and flirting will lead to other devastating things that will only result in you getting your heart broken. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the
the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.